Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about the fossil record. So I put out a video, it was a few weeks ago, um, talking about I want some evidence for macro evolution. And I had a bunch of people tell me that there's evidence for evolution from the fossil record, but I'm going to show you that the fossil record was a complete fraud. And there's a lot of top evolutionists that actually agree with me as well. Um, so I'm going to try to get through this. I actually had a cough the last week, so I'm not on a cough drop right now. So I'm going to try to get through this with mi uh, minimal coughing. So Let's jump into this. What do fossils prove? <clears throat> fossils prove nothing. All they prove is something died, right? You can't prove that any fossil had any offspring. So that's the, the first thing I just kind of want to put out there. The second thing is the majority of people have never seen a real fossil. And I'm going to show you evidence for this as well. I'm going to show you evidence that all the top evolution that you see have probably never seen a real fossil. Uh, all they see are replicas. And I'm gonna show you with some, some articles here cited as well. And most of these fossils, they're locked up in vaults. Um, it's not like just some building, but these things are actually locked up. They're actually very hard to get to. And all we see are replicas. And then um, when I'm showing you these experts, the evolutionists, quote unquote, um, they all agree that there's no transitional forms. So when you give me you know, all these comments in the comment section of the macro evolution, I'm still waiting, by the way. I put out a video saying, hey, I want some evidence for macro evolution. And people will say, oh, there's tons of evidence out there. Just look at the fossil record, look at this. But I don't have any specific examples. So if anyone can give me some evidence for macro evolution, I would love to see it. I'm still waiting. So let's jump into this. Uh, this is a phenomenal bro uh, book. It's called Bones of Contention. It's a creationist assessment of the human fossils. But a lot of this stuff you can back up with secular sources as well. But if you haven't read this book, uh, it's an awesome book. Uh, so let's jump into this. I want to kind of go through a, a quick blip of what this says. It says, no prisoner on death row is under greater security than those ancient relics called human fossils. Most of the original fossils are sequestered inside vaults of concrete or stone or stone and accessible only through massive steel doors the uh, the type you would expect to see at the first national bank few can even see them let alone study them this process of seclusion was true with the original 1856 feldhofer cave ne uh, neanderthal the skull and the bones were full uh, full roots private property and he did not show them to, to many only very few scholars in britain and on the continent had seen the skull or obtained a cast. Even Rudolf uh, Virchow, the greatest medical man of his time, could only study the remains in Fulrit's house after getting access from his wife when Fulrit was away. William King never saw the original fossils, although he is the one who, in naming them Homo ne uh, Neanderthal Ennesis in 1864, declared them to represent a different species from modern humans. Darwin never saw these or any other fossil humans, although he published an entire book on human evolution in 1871. See, Darwin's is a complete scam. Thomas Huxley, Darwin's bulldog, never saw the original fossils either, although he described them in his famous 1863 work, Man's Place in Nature, that should dispense with the concept that human evolution was based upon fossil evidence. And that's page 22 to 23 on Bones of Contention. Go read it. And I just want to give you a quick example of a fraudulent fossil. And you see this all with the different fossils. If you look at the fossil Lucy and all these supposedly different monkeys, um, they're all frauds. And I'm going to show it here. You can just read about this. Piltdown Man. The classic illustration that cast can be far from ideal is the account of the fraudulent Piltdown Man fossils. And what's interesting about these fossils, too, is whenever you have a new fossil come out, um, all of these... Uh, scientific news publications they'll come out they'll start talking about it National Geographic and then when they're wrong they'll never come back and say oh we were wrong we messed up we're gonna go ahead and retract this article you never see that Piltdown Man was a combination of a late model human cranium and a piece of the lower jaw of an orangutan the teeth of the orangutan mandible had been filed down to make them look human and to match those in the upper jaw of the cranium Lewis Leakey, in his book Adam's Ancestors, tells of several attempts to make a detailed study of the original Piltdown fossils. On each occasion when he visited the British Museum to do so, he was given the original fossil for just a few moments. Listen to this. This is important. They were taken away, and he was given casts to work on. The file marks on the orangutan teeth were visible on the originals, but they were not visible on the casts. So this is a fraud. And a lot of secular publications came through and said, hey, this is this is a complete fraud. This doesn't make sense. But I could spend the next 10 hours going through <clears throat> talking 
talking about different fossil records um, and they're all frauds. And look at this, I'm gonna show you some big time, I'm gonna beat a dead horse here, but I'm gonna show you some big time evolutionists who say that the fossil record just makes no sense. It actually points to the creationist view. See, if you look at fossils, the only way for something to fossilize is for it to be buried rapidly. And if you look in the book of Genesis, you have uh, Noah's flood, uh, it makes a lot of sense. The, the fossil record fits into the creationist point of view, but it baffles evolutionists. And if you think about this, if your dog or cat it just you know dies out back, it's not going to fossilize. It's going to be picked apart by um, you know coyotes or foxes. I know right out here out back, I got coyotes, foxes, bears, and it's only going to last a couple hours before it's gone. And even if you take that fossil and you bury it just a couple, I'm sorry, the animal just a couple feet below the ground, um, bugs and things are going to get to it. It's going to be completely gone. So the only way for something to fossilize it has to be uh, buried rapidly in flood. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, in uh, in mud. But go read about it. Um, you can find this from secular sources as well. So let's jump into this. This comes from Stephen J. Gould, and I'm going to beat a dead horse here. I've got about 20 quotes, and I just want to show you that this stuff is still being taught in textbooks, yet leading evolutionists are saying that the fossil record is a joke and it's a fraud. The absence of fossil evidence for intermediary stages between major transitions and organic design. So the transitionary form saying if humans evolved, you should see... Uh, slow transitions in between. It's called uniformitarianism. You see slow transitions over millions of years that people supposedly evolved. Indeed, our ability, even our in our imagination, to construct functional intermediates in many cases has been a persistent and nagging problem for the gradualistic account of evolution. This is Stephen Jay Gould. He's a, he's a prominent evolutionist. Well, we are now about 120 years after Darwin and the knowledge of the fossil record has been greatly expanded. The record of evolution is still surprisingly jerky, and ironically, we have seen fewer examples of evolutionary transition than we had in Darwin's time. Some of the classic cases of Darwinian change in the fossil record have had to be discarded or modified as a result of more detailed information. David Rope, evolutionist. And I, the reason I put this in yellow here, it says it has to be discarded or modified. I just showed you the Piltdown man that they filed down the jaw <coughs> and they discarded it and completely modified it to fit their narrative. That's what this is about. It's just fitting their, uh, your narrative. I fully agree with your comments on the lack of direct illustration of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any fossil or living, I would certainly have included them. Yet Gould and the American Museum people are hard to contradict when they say there are no transitional forms. I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil for which one can make a watertight argument. Colin Patterson, evolutionist. Given the fact of evolution, one would expect the fossils to document a gradual steady change from ancestral forms to the descendants. But this is not what the paleontologist finds. Instead, he or she finds gaps in just about every phyletic series. The discovery of unbroken series of species changing gradually into descending species is very rare. Ernest Meyer, evolutionist. It must be significant that nearly all the evolutionary stories I learned as a student have now been debunked. Yet they keep teaching this stuff in textbooks. This is, this is coming from evolutionists. I'm not making this stuff up. Similarly, my own experience of more than 20 years looking for evolutionary lineages among the Mesozoic um, Brachiopoda has proved them equally elusive. It remains true, as every paleontologist knows, that most new species, uh, uh, genera, and families and that nearly all categories above the level of families appear in the record suddenly and are not led up to, uh, to by known, gradual, completely, uh, completely continuous transitional sequences. Uh, George Gaylord Simpson. He, Darwin, prophesied the future uh, generations of paleontologists would fill in these gaps by diligent search. 120 years of paleontological research later, it has become abundantly clear that the fossil record will not confirm this part of Darwin's predictions. Nor is a problem a miserably poor uh, record. The fossil record simply shows that the prediction was wrong. Niles Eldridge. And he uh, looks like he wrote a book here or something, The Myths of Human Evolution. We paleontologists have said that the history of life supports the story of gradual adaptive change, all the while really knowing that it does not. Eldridge, Time Frames, page 144. Nine-tenths of the talk of evolution is his sheer nonsense, not founded on observation and wholly unsupported by facts. And that's what science is. If you look up the definition of science, it has to be observable and testable. Fossil record, 
Uh, there really is no fossil record. It's just fossils, just a, a bunch of stuff that died. But there are no transitional forms. And all these evolutionists are saying that this is the case. Not founded on observation and wholly unsupported by facts. This museum is full of proofs of the utter fal uh, falsi uh, falsity of their views in all this great museum. There is not a particle of evidence of the transmutation of species. A major problem in proving the theory has been the fossil record. The imprints of vanished species preserved in the Earth's geological formations. This record has never been never revealed traces of Darwin's hypothetical intermediate variants. Instead, species appear and, uh, and disappear abruptly. That's the Cambrian explosion. If you look at the... That's just saying that every uh, the beginning animals, they appeared suddenly and fully formed. There were no transitional phases. And this anomaly has fueled the creationist argument that each species was created by God. <clears throat> it is as though they fossils were just planted there without any evolutionary history. This is coming from Richard Dawkins. Everyone knows this guy. He's a, he's a prominent evolutionist. And he admits that fossil records, it, it, there's, there's no evidence there for macroevolution. Needless to say, this appearance of sudden planting has delighted creationists. Both schools of thought, punctuationists and gradualists, despise so-called scientific creationists equally, and both agree that the major gaps are real, that they are true imperfections in the fossil record. The only alternative explanation of the sudden appearance of so many complex animal types in the Cambrian area, era is divine creation, and both reject this alternative. Here's another quote by Stephen Jay Gould. I know I'm beating the dead horse here. I'm just trying to make you understand. I have people commenting all the time. The look at the fossil record. The fossil record means nothing. There's no transitional forms. One outstanding fact of the fossil record that many of you may not be aware of, that since the so-called Cambrian explosion, during which essentially all the anatomical designs of modern multicellular life made their first appearance in the fossil record, no new phyla of animals have entered the fossil record. Stephen Jay Gould. I think I got like two or three more here. Every paleontologist knows that most species don't change. That's bothersome, brings terrible distress. This is from Stephen Jay Gould too. They may get a little bigger or bumpier. They might remain the same species and that's not due imperfection and gaps, but stasis. So there's a difference between macro evolution and micro evolution. Micro evolution, I'm actually care, uh, careful to say that it's variations with the gene code. Um, if you look at the book of Genesis, it says animals will bring forth after their kind. So if you take a tiger, you take a lion, you take a panther, you look back, this is a cat. The Bible says that this will happen. If you look at humans, we have brown hair and blonde hair and uh, blue eyes, green eyes, uh, brown eyes. You see variations within the gene code. And this is the only stuff that you see. And then this gets perverted into saying that this eventually evolved into something bigger, a totally different species. We don't see that. You have microevolution, which is variations with the gene code. We all admit we see that, and that's what the Bible says. But when there, where this uh, this theory or doctrine gets perverted is saying that humans evolved from some fish into a bird. It's just it's a joke. They may get a little bigger or bumpier, but they remain the same species, and that's not due to imperfection and gaps, but stasis. And yet, this remarkable stasis has generally been ignored as no data. If they don't change, it's not evolution, so you don't talk about it. Stephen J. Gould. We can tell tales of improvement for some groups, but in honest moments, we must admit that the history of complex life is more a story of multifarious variation about a set of basic designs than a saga of accumulating excellence. I regard this, here it is, Stephen Jay Gould. I regard the failure to find a clear vector of progress in life's history as the most puzzling fact of the fossil record. We have sought to impose a pattern that we hope to find on a world that does not really display it. So I could make a video of 10 hours long talking about how all the fossils that have been found are just frauds and they try to manipulate them. And I can keep going on quote after quote after quote about leading evolution as saying that fossil record is not a good source uh, to prove macro evolution or evolution of any sort. So you take this for what it's worth. Um, don't take my word for it. Look this stuff up. And look, if you're someone that's kind of undecided, uh, check out that book called Bones of a Contention. Contention. It's a great book. And I think you should study both sides. I'm going to start reading some evolutionary books. Um, I'm going to start reading Richard Dawkins books because I think it's important to see both sides. I've read a lot of his material um, online and I have a, you know, a book I've, I've read a few pages of, but I want to start studying even more both sides. And I think that's what an education is. This is called indoctrination. This is what they teach in school. They say it's a theory, but they're teaching it as it's fact. 
So I think you should teach evolution and creation. You either teach both or you teach none and let the kids think for themselves. And I think that's on any issue, as you should always look at both sides of the issue. Um, so I'm going to start this year coming up. I'm going to start reading a lot more books um, through the evolutionary uh, perspective. I think you should too. And hey, if you're going to come here and argue with me, you know, read some books that I recommend, and let's you know have healthy debates about this. So that's it. And uh, if you made it this far, this is my favorite part of this entire video. And this is how you become a Christian. This is what it says in Romans 10, 9, and 10. Um, I, I, before I was a Christian, I thought just being a good person, that's what made me a Christian, but it's not. I, you know, I paid my taxes, had a good job. I felt like I treated people pretty good. Um, that's not what makes you a Christian. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And this is how you do it right here, Romans 10, 9, and 10. It says, if, uh, that if thou shalt confess thy, thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a man heart believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's a simple prayer to say, hey, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe in you. I want you to come into my life and uh, take over. I repent of my sins. And Lord, please come into life. Show me what you want me to do uh, for your kingdom. I want to be with you forever. I believe in your birth, your crucifixion, your resurrection, and you dying on that cross for me. And that's all it is. It's a super simple prayer. You don't even have to say those exact words. And then I would consider... Um, Start getting into the Bible and start reading. It says in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we need to study uh, and grow so we can rightly divide the word of truth. And that's what this channel is here to do is defend apologetics. We're going to defend the Bible and then we're going to debunk the evolutionary theory because kids are being indoctrinated. And I think this is where we're uh, losing a lot of kids uh, both in school and the church. So that's it. Um, we put out videos every week on Monday, and then I've been putting out some one-minute videos uh, just about every day. It's been kind of fun, so check it out. And then if you have any questions or want topics discussed, uh, send me an email. I always look at all my emails. I, I typically always respond, uh, but I enjoy the feedback uh, on my videos. So that's it. I appreciate watching. We'll see you all soon.